Hello and welcome to iTrade Aims. This is Imi. Today, the 10th of February, we're going to do a review of the charts. Okay, so we will start with the DAX today. So this is how it started. This is what London Open was. Around London Open, price was looking up like it's going up. So if you look at the going to the hourly chart, price has been going up last few days. But yesterday it dropped down, came down and overnight it went all the way back up. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, what happens on the hourly chart to be honest, uh, whether it's an uptrend or downtrend or sideways, it does not really matter as long as the distance, uh, the range of candles is enough. So normally uh, these one or two candles would have 60 or 70 points in it. So if you look at this. This one candle has 45 points in it. That's enough for us to catch something on the M1. So all we need from the hourly chart are actually these levels. Let me just move the current levels instead of printing new ones. So I would want the most recent high and that's that. It's from the overnight and then I would mark that level here. And I would also mark Let's have another one here. That's too thick. Okay, thin it down. I'll probably mark this level down here, right? Which was of no use to us. Uh, oh no, it will be of use to us, but we'll see. Um, over here, and then I will mark this level. And that's it. So if price was to go up from this point, then these are my two levels probably this one as well it's at a certain point and I can also mark this level and this level as well let's suppose I mark this and this I want to go to the M5 chart this is the process I follow right so on the M5 let's full screen it uh, let me just go and find my session breaks so I know where it that's the midnight right so this is my overnight range today my overnight range has been quite trendy usually it's sideways so this is the Frankfurt open so I will mark the higher Frankfurt open it's very close to this level so I can use that if I want and then I would like to mark this level usually I would use a different technique on my MT4, what I'll do is that I will create a, like a box here so that I can differentiate whether this is a long term level or just the M5 or that. So, going to the split screen now. Luckily, on Trading View, if you draw on this chart, it goes on this one as well. So, I'm going to play the chart one by one now. So let's see what happens. So this is uh, one minute before the London Open. It's already breaking out. All I want to see now is to see if the market will break at the London Open. So first candle, bang, it goes down. No respect for these levels, but it did go up and hit those levels, right? Let's go to the 15 second chart. And <clears throat> let me show you. See, if you look at this, the first 15 second price went up and the fact that I had those levels there and then I'm looking at these level you know M5 box high and also that this is the high of the Frankfurt session the pre-market session price comes to it hits it gets rejected immediately goes down I am absolutely ready now to either look for a 15 second pullback or a micro pullback on the one minute and go short it right let's let's go with this and that's the next candle there wasn't enough there was anything there was nothing in between the two candles can you see these two wicks between the two it was just nothing so if i take you to the 15 second chart for this there is no real pullback but what's interesting is what's this line see this line here what we draw earlier it kind of bounced against it so i had a little chance there uh, sorry we're talking about the wrong one see over here so when price comes to this level we go back to the m1 
Anyway, let me just uh, go one by one on this. I like to do this. So, doing it again, moving forward. The first minute goes down, and around here there was a there was slight. Yeah, that's what it is. So, the first 30 seconds, and then after that, it comes to that level, this level here. Let's just move that forward. Ooh, see, that's what's happening. It comes back. I usually can take an entry here, but I didn't today. I was purely looking for uh, the one minute pullbacks. So, immediately strong move, very strong move right from the beginning it goes 40 points down exactly what I want right now my feelings at that time was maybe I've missed the move because you know I should have taken the breakout or I should have taken this micro kind of pause here this can be considered as a waltz pattern not quite right it's bounced against the previous you know which was the support kind of retested it went down Sometimes you might find me shorting it right here with stop loss up there. Uh, it's about 10, you know, 10, less than 10 stop loss and it goes down and I catch it. Now I'm waiting for a pullback. Can you see how price comes back to this yellow line again? Almost continued. Uh, almost continued. Almost a three candle pullback almost but not quite it was a two candle pullback right on this but that's the 15 second shot this is what's happening inside over over here between these two candles so I'm waiting so the 15 second shot did not do anything for me I don't usually look at the 15 second shot anyway I'm looking at the M1 shot so let's go back to the M5 and M1 formation. And that's how I'm looking at the charts. So I see one candle in between. There was no micro pullback for me. If this kind of came back here and there was a little bit longer wick, I would have got in or I might have used the 15 second chart to have a look at it. If I had a three candle pullback on that and then I would get in. But that didn't happen. I'm thinking, OK, we have what we want. Point number one, you want either a stock market inside the box and point number two, you want the breakout or you want uh, the market open and a breakout. In this situation, we have both of them. We have the market stuck inside a box and it's the open. And the open is met with volatility breakout. That's what it is. A volatility breakout, high volume, goes down, breaks out. Now all I have to do is wait for a nice kind pullback. Pullback candle number one, pullback candle number two, Watch, it bounces against the levels as well. And because I would I would sometime go on a two candle pullback, but because the move was too far down, I only wanted to wait for a three candle pullback. And this candle became the third candle. And that's it because it because I had this line there. And even if you didn't have the line, you just had this formation here. Uh, even if you you know pay the rent on this I mean you wouldn't pay you wouldn't pay a rent because you have at least one point uh, distance with this which it didn't do or maybe it got you in so in that case it will probably be a short a quick exit on this but then you'll get back in this Frank is the OB the outside candle why is this an outside candle is because if you look at the candle to the left the high of this candle is higher than the candle to the left and the low of this candle is lower than the candle to the left. And the most importantly, the open of this candle is towards the high end of the wick, the whole range of the this uh, candle. And the close is closer than even the low and this over here, the open of this candle. I want the close to be below the low. So for a good outside candle, I want the range to be outside. So this is all the range of this is outside the range of the candle to the left. Uh, these are confirmation candles. So when you have a pullback, when you have a strong breakout, volatility breakout, and then pullback, and then you have a candle like this, this is a strong trend resumption confirmation candle. You can just go short straight away as soon as the candle closes. And that's exactly what I did. So it goes down 
kind of scares you and this is the first target so when you enter on these your first target is this you want to see what it does over here kind of scares you but i'm i'm holding on to my guns right because i believe in this i'm like oh it's going strong this is going to go then probably kicks out the weaker hands you know if you were too scared kicks you out price goes down further now we're testing and that's it now it's it breaks it goes further down I've, I've closed up this this has hit the target and you already see there's another lion that is approaching <clears throat> the 410 level over here and that's to do with all of these levels right uh, what I drew at the start anyway it goes further down wrong chart trailing candles trailing candles that's it kicks out and if you had a 2R target, uh, which should be, uh, I think, let's put that study on this. You will see, if you went short here, and your stop loss was there, where was your 2R? There was your 2R. So it's something like this. Something like that. Okay. So, <clears throat> few pips difference and everything changes right <clears throat> here we go so that's your 2R uh, but I did it on trailing candles let's have a look at my trade where did it go yeah so that was the first one from here down to here and I think uh, beautiful beautiful picture was King's picture I have set up the young king on oh yeah that's a beautiful beautiful trade he took now we have a cherry on this uh, but that's a different thing it's a two candle pullback I've set him up on three candle pullback he took the trade here he trailed the candles beautiful beautiful trade beautiful trade right well done that's uh, Bitcoin so if you if you didn't know what time frame was it would you be able to tell not really uh, look at this trade right pull back and look at this one now this one granted it has a very long tail up there uh, we don't want that but still you have two candles and then you have a seed which is just above this and the most important thing in this was that I didn't know Elon Musk was going to announce something over here just you just do the pattern and the pattern tells you everything what I saw was on this was the A down, B up and C down. And I actually had um, a trading view, a uh, little video on this when it was going down here. And when I saw this and I thought, OK, if this becomes an ABC, we have a strong wave five coming. And that means that if it breaks this, your next target is 50,000. These are exact my words. Uh, I am going to find that. Let me go to trading view. Definitely gonna find that video. Because it was a nice one. Bitcoin quick Elliott wave analysis. <laughs> yeah. And it's that video which they not the one they banned me <laughs> for using I don't know what So it's not here. Where was that analysis? Uh, OK. 
Okay, forget it then. Can't find it. Hmm. What is happening? Let's close this one. Let's go back to our Dexy. Here we are. Right, let me have a look at who's with us. Zygmunt, Jodine, and Nadis, Frank, and Doug. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm just going through DAX M1, one by candle by candle, and I got dis distracted a bit. So let's come back to it. So that's the first one. This is the first one. is not marked here I have another picture so first three entry on three candle pullback that's nice uh, King Aslan took it here beautiful trade love this so that's the I've set him up on the low bot uh, lesson 16 right the low bot strategy template uh, I'm experimenting with him he's a 19 year old kid uh, whether I can just teach him the pullback method straight away. Now he knows setup one already, but then I thought, okay, let me just set up on the low bot strategy straight away and see if he can hack it. And this is his first day of, what is it? It's second day or third day of trading this method. He had some hiccups on the first, second day, but then we had a bit of mentoring and all that. Comes back on Tuesday today picks the perfect setup and takes 2R, uh, 3R actually. So he is excited. Well done King Aslan. So that's one, but it wasn't over there. Let's go forward. Another one, two, three, four candle pullback, right? So I did take this. Uh, let me just remove this. Um, I was wary, uh, but I had to take it. It was a nice, lovely, pull back it kind of bounced against those levels as well oh, don't move that one let's move this one comes down pretty nicely I'm, I'm looking for a target here because there's quite a lot of distance there goes there um, you see it's reacting to those level as well the, the yellow line and then it starts to churn and that's where I got out because now I can see that ABC might be happening right Go to the 15 second chart i'll show the inst internal structure of this you see this i'm going to quickly mark this as well so if this is my wave structure on this at that time then that will be my one two this would be my three this would be my four and wait a second i will explain why this is four can you see this a b c and there's a pc pattern so it's important to learn the PC pattern because it helps you understand this. So this is the ABC pullback. You have uh, a PC there. That makes it a very good trade. And I think Dave took a trade here. Uh, let me just scroll back. Yeah, Dave's technique is uh, fascinating. It's beautiful as well. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, that's Dave's trade. Beautiful. And right. So once you see this, or if you can spot this on the M1 shot, which is one, two, three, four, five, right? I saw, okay, I'm getting B trapped. So this was the B trap. And that is on this picture here. This one here, this trade. Took it here, got out, I think it was a minus two or minus three, whatever. Okay, let's move it forward. Now, ideally what I do is that once you, and it makes sense that if you have an A up and B down, then you should only take the low of this. But today I've, I just went with an order below this candle. Or was it that candle? Fourth candle down and 
it it was it was great i loved it it, it moved very nicely beautifully down pull back up i think i got out there let's go to that picture again okay so i go in there and obviously the um what's happening here is that i'm aware that i should be actually going down here because you know the rule is that if if the pullback fails right this means that pullback has failed then i don't take the pullback but at the same time i also know that there are some traders out there uh, very successful one who believe in this uh, you know the pullback method is what they say is that the first when the first pullback fails the second pullback is even higher probability so that's also in the back of my head and i'm thinking all right we might get in here i will get out there if it, if it didn't work uh, but obviously when it comes down to this level and fails to break that I'm quick to take half profits here and then the rest of it gets out break even but what happens after that is that I have this two candle pullback and as soon as the third candle happens we have this box here as well so I could have done uh, when short below the box it would be a valid entry but I was already in so let's go back to our chart At this two candle pullback, I set my order here. I, I, I am absolutely sure that we have a three here, four up, and we're gonna see a five down. And this was uh, a pretty beautiful trade. Let me bring that screenshot that I shared. Here it is. So I was short from there. And I had one target at one hour. So what I did, I went with a half a risk, two entries. One with a one ratio one target point and the other one with a bigger target. So this one, I literally just started chatting in chat room and started doing other stuff as soon as the entry was in because I didn't want to uh, do anything with it. I just wanted to do its thing and it did it. The first, it was free. So as soon as this was a hit, I knew that now I cannot lose on this trade. Why? Because it's a free trade. How? Well, if you take 1% risk, 1R risk, right? And you have, you split the position into two trades. One is one ratio one target hit and the other one still has stop loss up there. So if the market turned around after this and hit my stop loss, this would be a minus 0.5R and this would be a plus 0.5R. So the end result would be break even. So a free trade, very good for your mindset because it gives you that uh, the free trade mindset, which is a risk free state of mind. And that is what uh, makes demo trading so easy. You can double, triple, quadruple your account in demo because you are doing risk free trading. And that, that also means that if you trade on demo and you cannot be profitable, you have absolutely no right to go to live account at all. Demo trading should be so easy for you that you will laugh at it. Uh, even the, the young kid, King Aslan, he doubles and triples his account every time he sets, I set him on, on demo. So, and he's fascinated why it happens. And the, the thing is, if you have a good strategy and a risk-free state of mind, which is demo trading, you can do wonders with it. Now, the next step is to go on a live account and learn to have the risk-free state of mind. Now, to obtain the risk-free state of mind, you have to learn to understand the probabilities. If you do not have the probabilistic mindset, it will be difficult to get to the risk-free state of mind. So, anyway, moving on. Coming back to... I have this because I want to talk about this as well, the daily chart scan. We started back in 2019 and it has been resumed. So that's the other trade. Beautiful, beautiful trade. Went completely mental. Uh, then created another seed down there. And this is where I got out, right? This is where I got out. Let's have a look at those two pictures as well. So I posted this picture because I was trailing candles. So here I'm saying, okay, trading candles and 
As soon as I posted that, the next moment I was stopped out. It's a beautiful 2R. So a, a 3R here, um, less than minus 2.5R here. Then I think I probably just recovered this and then a nice lovely 2R on this. But we are not done. Okay, so we're still waiting and it keeps going. There's another pullback here. Uh, but can you see that now it's failed? And as soon as this next push fails, you know that now things have changed. You have a divergence, you have a completed wave. If we go to the 15 second chart and look at that full chart, you will see now that internally, and I don't do these counts anymore. I don't, I don't do it like, uh, like I'm not telling you that while I was trading, I was doing all these counts. It just goes in the back of my head. Just understanding this takes you to the next level. Like you know what's happening in your setup uh, behind it. This is what's happening. So look, the first wave we counted its waves, three, four, fives, all nicely. And now if I draw your attention to this pullback here, also in ABC. Now remember this, sometimes the C does not go above the high of A wave. And that's why wave fours are the most unpredictable because their zigzags can, can sometimes be, and that's why sometimes wave fours will have the, uh, the converging triangles, you see, like this, stepping up box and stepping down box. Let's draw it a bit, right? So one is here and the other one like this. See the trends? And then it's the, the squeeze, the wedge, the wedge or whatever it's called. Uh, so you have this, uh, which Steve would call the trend line break, right? So when you have a trend down and then you have this rally up and then when it breaks, you go short. Anyway, so you have one, two, three, four, five, and then you have ABC. Let's mark the ABCs as well from here. That's your A, that's your B, and that's your C. Um, I'm not drawing godly uh, patterns or anything like that. <laughs> it just happens to be a triangle, and then I drew ABC in between it. Um, and then you, you see another wave down, so we can mark that as well. So what do we see here? We see probably a, a one, two on this. That's your one and two. And this probably was a three, or is this a three, right? Or maybe this whole thing is a three. Only time will tell. But so far within this, I can see one, two, three, four, five. This is an internally a three. So I'll mark this a three. This could be a four, and we could probably have a, four, a five down there, right? That That's also a possibility. So with Elliott Wave, the possibilities are endless, but the biggest thing that Elliott Wave does to you is that in the back of your head, you know that you're trading in line with the structure of the market. And that's what makes it beautiful. Uh, so if you understand the structure and if you can do it using the 10 second quick Elliott Wave technique, you know that there's a peak here and a divergence. That means this impulse wave is most probably coming to an end. And that's it. I was off this. And although it does appear like an ABC over here, I had my profits and stuff and I was waiting. If I went short here, this wouldn't be a good idea because this is not really a pullback that I'm waiting for. Why? Because this has, you know, the, the push down, it failed. So once it fails, I want the break of the box. And so you could see momentum was going down and then a very, very strong move up. And now I'm coming to Frank's dilemma or I think Alina took a, uh, a trade earlier. Now, you see, would you call this a pullback? Well, obviously not. This is a this is a reversal up. Very, very strong move. Actually, this move is stronger than both of these down moves. Look at it. This move and this move and this one, or if not stronger than that, at least equal to it. It comes all the way back and eight out of 10 times. Uh, wave fours usually would come back to the previous wave four of the wave three down, right? Comes there and now it will start hanging off the purple line and that, that's a very typical one as well this is a very nice apple 
entry here. You see this apple? It's a bearish divergence candle that is hit the purple uh, right next to the previous four. See this this area here, the pivot zone. Let's mark it with a line. See the down box here, and then the box retesters here. This also helped me with that entry, and then price comes back to it. So a very nice apple entry there. So the apple entry itself was successful, uh, but if you're going for a setup one, uh, this is not uh, what I would call a setup one because you know Gator was not sleeping; it was not within a tight box, and the wave four sideways is not happening. This is not a sideways wave four. Would you call this a sideways wave four? No. This is an impulse move up. You want uh, the market to go sideways. So let's go to the M5 and M1 view. Let's just get rid of this now and go to the full time chart. I'll also get rid of the lines. So we have a push down, two candle pullback, push down on the M5. Then that is followed by a reversal candle and, and, and a very impulsive strong move up. I want to bring here an interesting thing. Uh, that's that pattern I was talking about. You know, when there's a first break, you have high volume. And then when you have a pullback, you have low volume. And then the next break continues with slightly higher volume and then on this one even more higher volume and then when it pulls back volume drops so it's going up on low volume but when the supposedly a resumption begins there is no high volume again can you see now if we had seen this much volume on these candles there would have been a resumption that's not the case this pullback has broken the symmetry of this move down it should have stopped somewhere here, like a three candle pullback over here and then started going down. And if I mark this level here, um, like so, see this is where it comes to an M1. So price shouldn't have gone all the way up there. It should have kind of gone up there and then started going sideways. Then we would have been interested in setup one down. This was not a setup one. The wave four that we look for was not there. It's too impulsive and it did not create a nice, lovely box. The symmetry wasn't there. And then by this time, purple had mingled with the gator and it was inside the box, so not a setup. And just by following the purple rule, uh, without even knowing this detailed analysis, if you just follow the purple rule, you'd avoid uh, these kind of setups and avoid paying a rent. So um, that's it for me on the DAX side. It was a really lovely, beautiful, what is this? Oh, this is, yeah, this is uh, UEC that I spotted the other day. And I, I, I think I shared it in the stock channel. And I think Wiki was saying the box was big. Uh, but for me, the box wasn't big and I was seeing the three candle pullback here. I actually wanted to trade it here. Uh, but obviously the price was already here. So then I put my order at uh, at the box up there. And um, when I went to my IG account, as soon as price went and hit it, uh, they canceled the order. Uh, I have emailed them. I'm finding out why they didn't because I missed a beautiful trade on this. Well, you know, it's spread betting. They, they sometimes don't offer some of the charts, some of the stocks. Um, this is, by the way, my template for stocks. I have the setup one on the right side and the low bot strategy, the pullback with the volume here on the weekly chart. Because I want to see for the pattern, for the, the pattern of setup one, what I want to see is that I want those three kind of pullbacks and I want volume to go down on this and I want high volume uh, within the wave three. See this wave three should have higher volume. I will check that on the weekly chart. And then during the wave four, which is the pullback on the weekly, I want lower volume. And then resumption should have higher volume. So we have quite a lot of volume going on in this resumption now. So uh, let's change that to the daily chart.
You guys do hear me, right? So if you look at the daily chart, these two... Thanks for confirmation, Doug. You all right? Okay. Um, so yeah, look at, look at this pattern here, the pullback pattern that we're talking about. You see the trend candle here. This was the break of the box, which is followed by three candle pullback and volume has gone down. And then the resumption candles here has increasing volume. So volume is a very, very powerful uh, indicator uh, that we should use to our advantage. Uh, but always with a, a pinch of salt or whatever it's called that saying. Um, how do you say it? With a pinch of salt or a grain of salt? Whatever it is. <laughs> Which means literally that uh, nothing is concrete in the market everything has a probability it adds to the odds uh, i think of it as layers you know layers of odds to create a confluence in your favor so if you had this volume analysis added especially on stocks because you get real volume on this right uh, this literally means that 21 million uh, shares or was it 200,000? whatever it is uh, let me just confirm it let's just confirm it yes it was volume was in millions so of course that's a whole week so 16 million stocks exchange hands and that let's go again to okay here we are and that's we are done with that so the next thing I want to talk about is that if you want to trade this beautiful waltz pattern on Forex, we have this daily chart scan that we update daily. We started back in 2019 and then I handed it over to Jasmine who went on a holiday and then she took a, a two years or 18 months holiday and now she's back in February 2021 so if you would like to benefit from this this will be available to you I have this link is there in the Forex channel uh, this link was there in I think in dashboard as well I don't know if it's still there I'll have a look so what she looks for is let's find We go to your USD. Actually, I can show it on this as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She looks for a pattern like this, right? So on this day, uh, or on this day, she would have seen a trend bar, a TB. Now, after the TB happens, we want a pause bar, bar, which did not happen. So. We would change that on the next day to this is weekly chart but i'm assuming it's a day right another trend bar and now we have three trend bars now we wait now we want one inside candle or a doji candle pause candle and when this happens this is our signal candle this would be our tri trigger candle so let's hide the numbers zoom in on this Trend candle, trend candle, trend candle. We don't need three. We only needed one. So around here, if it was a trend candle, we would wait for a pause candle. Didn't happen. Another trend candle, another one. Waited for it. Now we have this inside candle. We would go long above the high of this. And because this is a, a doji kind, we will have probably a stop loss over here. And this one will hit our target of 2R this next day. If not the next day, the next one. That's it. So trend candle post candle if I go to the weekly chart the monthly chart you'll see a similar thing is happening trend candle this is not kind of post candle but if it was a post candle we would have gone long on that one so that's that's what we're doing it's a very simple pattern let's actually find out uh, so on Bitcoin this was the example now this this probably was a rent on this one but that's your ten, trend candle trend candle pause candle it's a nice seed you'd go long this was a rent 
get back again and then obviously you know what happened this is that same mechanism that I was looking for but this one kind of re retraced back and then we took it there stop loss here one ratio one half was taken it was a free trade stop loss then when it started moving up brought stop loss to break even and then it's going up with trailing candles beautiful beautiful trade this is that same concept so if this was the daily chart she would mark this as trend candle she'd wait for a pause didn't happen the next day the next day this is the pullback and a pause she would be short here bang and that that's a great example so trend candle trend candle trend candle pause candle on a daily chart on the next day she would be short here around here she would be out let's actually go to uh, I think any time frame to be honest any time frame waltzes you can even do it on the 15 second chart as long as the pattern is there and there is volatility but obviously m1 i do it all the time you know on dax but d1 is something that uh, jazz it, it suits her style her personality i know that she's tried the m1 i know she's tried the m5 she's tried the hourly she started she's tried the four hourly and I introduced her to this back in 2019, but at that time she was too much into the setup ones that she was doing. She didn't want to let go and all that, and she, it took her all that time to finally grasp this idea. I know she's posting some of them, uh, so hold on. What was that? Yeah, here we go. You see this one, the dollar yen daily. What she's seen is she's seen this pattern here trend candle followed by a pause candle and then over here she's seeing uh, this is her way of doing it now uh, slightly different than me I mean with, with this candle here I wouldn't have gone short but she saw something in it she went short and you see within the same day she's hit a target so it, it is uh, it's been going pretty well for her I think let me see a few more yeah, this is this is one I would take. Beautiful. So you have those uh, two trend candles followed by two pause. So a waltz pattern is a what I call a 20x setup one. So waltz pattern has one or two maximum, either one candle or two, and you don't want pullback. It will have to be pause candle. So most of the time they're either inside candles or dojis, very very small, and they would stay like for a bearish situation. It would stay near the low of the trend candle over here and then she goes short and bang it's hit straight away this by by the way itself is a trend candle followed by a pause here to go long i think today uh, so here it is she's marked them i suppose we check this one uh, last night she has marked swizzy as bearish d1 waltz doji right Let's have a look at that. Using this chart. USD CHF. Aha, interesting, yes. So you have this uh, strong trend candle down, followed by a doji, and that's it. She'll be short here, and actually already hit her target within that candle. It's a really, really beautiful uh, trade. I used to call it the famous bar or the um, how to use the daily charts to trade intraday without even looking at it. So you're trading intraday, right? You, you entry and exit has happened within the same day, daily chart, daily candle, one candle. Uh, but you are not dedicating your entire eight hours session on this. You're only looking at these two pan, uh, candles. You, you set it's a set and forget you set your order here you stop loss there target point there bang it's done so here we see a two candle pin bar price goes up right and then exactly the same
time it closes and comes down. So if you cancel these two bodies, this is going to be a long wick. So if I was going to go to like a two two day uh, chart, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, no. <laughs> 1440 would be 2880. Yeah, it doesn't do two days. Let's see if it can. No, it can't. Let's see. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Days. Oh, two days. Two days. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. See this? A two candle. Wow. I'm impressed. So I've turned the chart into a two day chart to make the point. And what you see is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pin bar. Going back to the daily chart, see these two? Oh, I've lost audience. People have left me. These two candles have turned into a, a two day pin bar. See these two? So if this was the case, then obviously you will see on, goodness me, how many tabs do I have now? If that was the case, then we would have marked it as PB, D1 PB, a pin bar. And OB is an outside bar, daily scan for outside bar. A good OB is also a TB. Uh, OBTB can be traded on D1 on its own or used for famous setup, setup one on M15 trade, right? So this is the trend direction. Uh, and if it's a waltz pattern, then it will be further. So a waltz seat is preceded by a trend bar and validated by the three rules, which three rules? We have the scan procedure here. Step one, 25 charts, blah, blah, blah. Step two, no, 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 no. Where are the three rules? I don't know. It's been a couple of years I've seen this. And this was another chart for the H1 and M15. So the D1 scan is uh, really something that is very, very easy to follow and very, very powerful. So I think I'm done for the day. Uh, this is... This was today's little recap. A beautiful, beautiful day on DAX. Really fantastic. Um, I really look forward to people who complete their first batch or their stage one and setup one, and then so that they can move to this strategy because it is a pullback method, but it's a particular type of pullback uh, method. All of all our pull pullback entries are actually set up ones on the five times lower time frame because that is what you get trained for. You know, when you are training, getting trained in setup one, uh, when there's a good setup one, it's actually a nice good uh, pullback on the M5 chart. Uh, let's find one before I go. Yeah, for example, this one. For example, this one. Let's do the time thing. So you see, you have a strong move down on the M5, and you have a pullback. And if you look at the M1 chart, it has become a setup one. Then you have a pullback here. It's a three candle pullback, and it has become a setup two here, or a grand setup one because green and red are touching. So you can call this a sleeping gator. AO is close to zero line. So three candle pullback. So when you have a three candle pullback, you have a setup two type setups or these types. When you have a five to seven candle pullback, you would have a more detailed setup one like that. 
and with that I will end this this is a beautiful beautiful pattern I love it it's very profitable so there we go cheers Doug lovely to hear you again you're busy these days <laughs>